Hey guys, and welcome to the first compilation of Danielle Smith AI videos. Uh, this will cover the first 11 episodes of that series. So episodes 1 to 11, and there are a couple of story arcs in here. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Danielle Smith, part one. Hello there. Welcome to the Danielle Smith series, where every story you'll see will feature our main character, Danielle Smith, as she sets off on adventures with her parents and her father's wacky inventions. The first episode is called Danielle Smith and the Time Machine. It was a very typical day at the Smith household and Danielle Smith was watching one of her favorite time travel films on television when she heard a loud noise coming from her father's workshop. What's that noise? She went down there to see what was going on when her father, Professor John Smith, smiled and beckoned her forwards. Come on in, Danielle. And she walked curiously towards her parents. Her mother, Linda, smiled at her and asked if she'd like to see her father's new invention. Would you like to see your father's new invention, Danielle? Yes, please. Danielle, who was eight years old, by the way, replied excitedly. Professor John and Linda whisked off the tarpaulin to reveal a car. But mom and dad, that's just a car. Those have been around for years. You didn't invent them. Oh no, my dear girl, the car isn't what we've invented, but it's what we built into it that is our new invention. Professor John showed Danielle exactly what he built inside the car. As she looked inside, she was so impressed her mouth fell wide open. There was a flux capacitor, time circuits, a modern viewing screen, and a costume generator that would change the time travelers into the appropriate clothes for the time period they'd traveled to. Is this what I think it is? That's right, love. That in there is a time machine. Does it really work? That's what we're hoping to find out now if you'd like to join us replied Professor John, and she accepted the invitation. They all got seated in the car while John and Linda set the coordinates and put the time machine into flux. John then took the steering wheel and drove them carefully out onto the road before flooring it up to 100 miles per hour, only to open a vortex and find themselves driving through a Victorian landscape as their clothes morphed into Victorian-style outfits and the car changed its appearance to that of a horse-drawn cart, they stopped. According to the information on the screen, we are in London in the year 1860. Even though they were now dressed like the locals of the period and appeared to be sitting in a horse-drawn carriage, there was no hiding or disguising the actual time machine itself, which did indeed work as they had gone back in time. Just before someone saw them just sitting there, growing suspicious of their strange behavior, John pushed the return button on the computer and the time machine returned them home to the workshop in 2003. They were back in their normal clothes and the time machine was a car once more. As they left the workshop, I promise never to use the time machine without permission and without an adult as I am underage and there are risks of getting stuck in the past or future. We return to the Danielle Smith series where we prepare to enter our second episode which is called Danielle Smith Meets the Wizard of Oz. Let's get to it, shall we? One fine day in the Smith household and Danielle was enjoying reading one of her favorite children's books, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, where her mother Linda came to fetch her. We're ready for you now, darling. Come with me, please, she said and led her down to the workshop. As they entered, young Danielle was awestruck to find her eccentric father, John, inventor extraordinaire, standing next to a machine that looked like a giant storybook 
mixed with a television set, a game controller, a movie camera and a comic book. Dad, exactly what is this? She asked. This is my latest invention, a fictional universe travel machine. It has the ability to send a person into age-appropriate fictional universes from books, movies, television shows, video games and comics, John told her as he set the age filter to 8 to 12. Would you like to give it a go? He offered. Danielle was very excited and stepped forward to give the machine a go. John helped her get seated in the capsule. He then took his place at the controls and set the coordinates books and the wonderful Wizard of Oz and opened up a vortex before pulling a lever and releasing Danielle into the vortex. She arrived on the other side in a land full of lots of little people. She realized where she was when she saw a young girl and her dog emerge from a farmhouse that appeared to have crushed an evil witch. She was in Munchkinland, in the land of Oz. She went to join them as a pretty witch appeared before them who looked more like a fairy than a witch. She met Dorothy Gale and her dog Toto for the first time and noticed the silver slippers on her feet, which the Wicked Witch of the West was after. They were told they had to go and see the Wizard of Oz in the Emerald City to stop the witch. To get there, they had to follow the Yellow Brick Road. As they walked down the road of Yellow Bricks, Danielle told Dorothy how she came to be in Oz, and Dorothy was amazed and told her she wanted to go home. Along the way, they met three very special friends. The first of these friends was the Scarecrow, who decided to join their adventure to request a brain from the wizard, which was funny because he proved how clever he was coming up with all the plans. The second was the Tin Woodman, who joined them in search of a heart because his tin smith forgot to give him one. He ended up showing just how sensitive he was despite not having a heart. And the third was a cowardly lion who joined them in search of courage and showed some bravery at least. As they made their way, they met many obstacles which they managed to overcome. Thanks largely to both the Scarecrow's cleverness and Danielle's memory of the book she was now part of. They arrived in the Emerald City and got an audience with the wizard who turned out to be just an ordinary man who promised them their requests if they could go and kill the Wicked Witch of the West. They now had to commit murder in order to get their requests. As they infiltrated the witch's castle, Dorothy was taken prisoner and they had to rescue her as well. Danielle bravely faced the witch and ended her by splashing her with water, causing her to melt. They returned to the wizard with the dead witch's magic staff, so the wizard awarded the scarecrow with a diploma, the tin woodman with a heart, and the lion with a medal of honor signifying his bravery. Just before he was about to offer Dorothy a ride home in his hot air balloon, Danielle vanished and was returned home to her father's workshop. That was an excellent adventure. Welcome back to the Danielle Smith series. This is the third episode and we are about to witness her travel through her dreams in Danielle Smith and the Dream Machine. It was a quiet day in the Smith household as Danielle sat in the living room daydreaming about battling with pirates when her mother, Linda, shook her awake. Danielle, my darling, are you with us? Sorry, Mum. Linda took her by the hand and pulled her up. It's time once again, baby. Linda told her as she escorted her down to the workshop. This time as they entered, she saw before her what looked like a giant thought cloud, but was actually a glass capsule with a bed inside. Her father, John, was calibrating the controls. When he saw Danielle standing there with her mouth wide open in silent awe. What is this thing, Mum and Dad? Linda guided her forward. This is a dream machine. Dream machine? That's right. It's like a time machine. Only instead of traveling through time, it travels through a person's subconscious and into their dreams. Danielle was very interested to find out how the dream machine worked, so she volunteered to be the test subject while John set the machine to be suitable for her to use. Linda helped her up into the Thought Cloud capsule and put her to bed inside the machine before joining John at the controls. John started up the machine and a lullaby started playing, sending Danielle to sleep. 
As Danielle slept, a vortex to her subconscious opened up and the machine started transporting her into her dreams, while John and Linda watched the screen to see Danielle frolicking with fairies, dancing with dolls, driving a super-fast sports car, fighting a dragon, battling with pirates, casting spells as a very powerful witch, hunting ghosts, conversing with animals, and meeting her future husband. All of this before passing nightmare land and almost traveling through there, but diverted into the dream sun, which was a symbolism for her waking up. So another vortex opened up and they returned home to the workshop in the real world. The machine stopped as Danielle opened her eyes and started to sit with a yawn. John stepped up into the machine to help her out of bed, make the bed, and bring her back to the safety of her workshop floor. What happened? You traveled into your dreams, sweetheart. Did I? Yes, Buttercup, don't you remember? No, I wouldn't if it was a dream. Danielle laughed, the adventure leaving a twinkle in her eye and a memory in her heart. Hi guys, and welcome back to the Danielle Smith series. Uh, this is the fourth episode, and we're about to do our first multi-part story. This is Danielle Smith in Imagination Land, part one. Young Danielle Smith had a very active imagination, and would always draw very imaginative pictures, and make up some very imaginative stories. She was usually wondering to herself about what if she could travel into the imagination. That's when her mother Linda told her there was a way she could travel to Imagination Land and led her down into her father John's workshop to introduce her to the next of his inventions. What is that? She asked as she found herself gazing up at a machine that looked like a giant head with a cockpit that resembled a giant helmet with receptors coming off it. This is the imaginary world travel machine, replied John as he set the machine for a family trip to Imagination Land. Danielle knew John and Linda were going with her for her own safety, as it could be dangerous. They all climbed into the cockpit and John took the wheel while Linda took the gear stick and Danielle handled pushing a few buttons with guidance from her parents and off they went. A portal opened ahead of them and they flew through it into the bright skies of Imagination Land. Danielle looked on the view screen to see a massive green sheet with tiny dots down below. As they flew lower, she saw that it was actually a lush green field, and the dots were some well-known imaginary characters waving up at them. From what she could see, there was Cinderella, Pinocchio, Sir Lancelot, Merlin the Magician, Robin Hood and Perseus, all there to greet them. They found a place to land, and landed safely in a magical glade protected by fairies, and went to meet their welcoming committee. As they approached the group of characters who had come to welcome them, Sir Lancelot stepped forward and shook their hands. John and Linda Smith, welcome back to Imagination Land. It is nice to see you again, he said enthusiastically. It's nice to see you again too, Sir Lancelot. We're here to show our young daughter Danielle the wonders of Imagination Land, she told him, indicating Danielle. Cinderella stepped forward and crouched down to Danielle's eye level before holding out her hand. Hello, sweetheart. You must be John and Linda's daughter, Danielle, she said politely, shaking Danielle's hand. It's very lovely to meet you, your highness, said Danielle, bowing in courtesy. Oh, you didn't have to do that. I'm Cinderella, she told her before hugging her. Pinocchio smiled at them. Hey, I've met this little girl before, he told everyone, and his nose began to grow. Oh, Poppycock, of course you haven't, Pinocchio. Nobody has. This is her first time here, Robin Hood scolded. Oh, but I have. I swear to it, replied Pinocchio, and his nose grew a bit more. Stop lying, Pinocchio. You naughty little puppet, said Danielle as she came to introduce herself to him. I'm not lying, Danielle. I know I've met you before, replied Pinocchio, and his nose grew longer still. Danielle crossed her arms at him and gave him a stern look. All right, mister. I demand you tell me where you've met me before, she said sternly. Why, right here in Imagination Land, of course, replied Pinocchio, and his nose grew longer once more. Danielle began wagging her finger at him. That's a load of twaddle, and you know it. This is my first time here. You can't have met me here before. Stop telling fibs this instant, or I will put you in time out for being naughty, she scolded. 
You're right, Daniel. This is your first time here and I haven't welcomed you properly. I'm sorry, said Pinocchio. His nose returned to normal and he shook Daniel's hand. Welcome to Imagination Land, he said pleasantly. Everybody who witnessed this began applauding her for standing up and parenting Pinocchio to get the truth out of him. She stationed guards outside their rooms to protect them before bringing them to the royal banquet where there were more characters in attendance. There, Danielle met such characters as Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Rumpelstiltskin, Ariel, Belle and Aurora, who she knew were also princesses from other fairy tales. Some of the other guests included Hansel and Gretel, Little Red Riding Hood, Tarzan and Jane, Jack and Jill, Miss Polly and her dolly. A small boy rose from his table and approached the chef, holding out his plate. Please, sir, I want some more, he said. What was that, boy? asked the chef. Please, sir, I want some more, the boy repeated. You want more, boy? yelled the chef. The boy dropped his plate on the floor and started running through the banquet hall, and she caught him as he ran past their table. You're Oliver Twist, she shouted out, and the whole hall went silent. The guards grabbed Oliver and went to throw him out, but Aurora stopped them. This is not how we treat our guests. This is not how we treat our guests, she told them sternly and escorted Oliver back into the hall just as Ariel was taking Danielle to her room and sat her on her bed. She was not happy with her. Danielle Smith, your behavior just now was unacceptable. You do not sell other guests out like that ever. You will stay here and think about what you've done. Very naughty is what you are, she scolded before leaving the room. Welcome back to the Danielle Smith series. This is the fifth episode and we continue with our multi-part story in Danielle Smith in Imagination Land, part two. Let's first recap what happened last time. In the last episode, Danielle Smith began her first visit to Imagination Land with her parents, John and Linda, where she met lots of imaginary characters from various stories and ended up being grounded to her room by Ariel for selling out Oliver Twist. And now we pick up where we left off. Here we go. Well, Danielle, are you ready to apologize to Oliver for selling him out? Yes, Ariel. Ariel released her from the room and took her back to the banquet hall where Oliver was waiting to see her. She held out her hand and he took it. I'm truly very sorry I sold you out, Oliver. That's all right, Danielle. It's how my adventures began, remember? They shook hands, sealing the apology and officially counting as their first meeting. John and Linda joined them with another familiar face in tow. My goodness, Pip, how jolly nice to meet you. Danielle recognized the young man at once as Pip from Great Expectations. It's jolly nice to meet you too, Danielle. Just then, a beautiful young woman and a handsome young man appeared at Pip's sides. Danielle looked up at them and realized who they were. They were Estella and Mr. Pocket, and they were all pleased to meet each other. After a good night's sleep, Danielle was ready for her adventure to continue. As were John and Linda, However, they'd arranged for me to take flight in the famous magical motor car, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, and my escort on this journey was going to be the eccentric inventor, Caractacus Potts, who had come to pick me up. I couldn't believe I was going on a journey with one of my favorite characters from one of my favorite children's novels, and I was so excited. Pleasure to meet you, Danielle. Ready for an adventure? Absolutely. She shook his hand and went with him. As they took to the skies in the famous flying motor car, he pointed out places of interest as they passed over them. Look over there, Danielle. Wow, this is incredible. They landed in a village where lots of little blue creatures in white pointy hats lived. They were in the Smurf village and they observed the creatures running around doing their jobs. Look at them go, they're so busy. Yes, indeed, always something happening in Smurf village. After a while, he took her to their next stop, a town inhabited by characters from Dr. Seuss books. Welcome to Seussville. Oh my goodness, there's the cat in the hat being daft, the who's roaming around happily, and the Lorax just helping people. Before they were noticed, he moved them on to a city where lots of different characters lived. She saw centaurs, fairies, gnomes, wizards, and all sorts of imaginary characters from different creators. This is amazing. This was the imaginary capital, and some very important characters wanted to meet her. Danielle, I'd like you to meet King Arthur, the king of Imagination Land. 
and Mayor Candy Corn, a mix of a unicorn and a man composed entirely of sweets. Welcome, Danielle. We are very happy to meet you. Thank you, Your Majesty. They welcomed her very warmly. After a while, Caractacus Potts ushered her back to Chitty and returned her to the royal palace where John and Linda were waiting to greet her. And thank Mr. Potts for taking her on the adventure. Thank you so much, Mr. Potts. This was the best day ever. It was a pleasure, Danielle. Goodbye. He said goodbye and went on his way. That's it for part two. Stay tuned for part three. Coming Welcome soon. back to the Danielle Smith series. This is the sixth episode, and we still continue our first multi-part story, Danielle Smith in Imagination Land, part three. Before we carry on, let's briefly recap what happened in the last episode. Danielle was escorted on a journey around Imagination Land by Mr. Potts in his flying motor car and met the king and mayor of the land. We now pick up where we left off as John and Linda were taking Danielle back to their room at the Royal Palace of Imagination Land to get ready for dinner down in the banquet hall. While they were doing so, a beautiful fairy in a blue dress appeared in the room. Hello there, folks. I am here to meet a young girl by the name of Danielle Smith. That's me, ma'am. Danielle realized that it was the Blue Fairy who had come to meet her. She shook hands and formally introduced themselves. The Blue Fairy then passed on the message to her from the princesses that she must behave this time or they didn't want her there. She promised to be good as she placed her tiara on her head and the Blue Fairy disappeared, taking Danielle at her word. They arrived at the hall for dinner at six on the dot and before they sat down, an usher dressed in purple and carrying an old lamp showed them to their seats. Welcome everyone, please follow me to your seats. Danielle added two and two together and found out it was Aladdin and his magic lamp. This was going to be a very magical feast indeed. That was until something happened that turned it into chaos, so they had to cut it short with full apologies to all guests and send them back to their rooms or homes. The Smith family returned to their room where they all sat disappointedly, but they wouldn't go hungry, as food was sent up to them by Cinderella, who wanted to make sure her distinguished guests from the real world were well fed. Just as they were tucking in, Danielle began wondering if any of her creations had been brought to life in Imagination Land yet. She soon found out when Zeus, the Greek god of the skies, came to check on them. Accompanied by a young violet-skinned woman with long wavy mauve hair and amethyst eyes and wearing a purple sequin dress. This was one of her own creations and her name was Amethyst Violet and she was very pleased to meet her creator at last. Hello Danielle, it's such an honor to finally meet you. You know, I've always wanted to thank you for bringing me to life. She was a very beautiful woman who loved everyone and everything in the world. Welcome back to the Danielle Smith series. This is the seventh episode and we get straight into it, Danielle Smith in Imagination Land Part 4. After an action-packed few days in Imagination Land, the last day had come for Danielle Smith, who had been there with her parents John and Linda. They had decided to take her on a trip around some of the areas she hadn't seen before. They first took her to the place where new characters appeared after being created. This was where she met some more of her own characters and those were the Rock and Roll Mermaid, Solitaire Man, Fruity Saladman, Tiny the Giant, Biggie the Dwarf, Frank Rink the Ice Skater, Cola, Sprightly, Dr. Pepper and Pepsi Girl, the literal pop band as they were anthropomorphic pop drinks. It was a very busy place as a hot dog racer came zooming past them. After a while, they took her to the Hundred Acre Wood where she met a boy called Christopher Robin and his friends, Pooh Bear, Rabbit, Owl, Tigger, Piglet and Eeyore who were playing. Then they took her to the Magic Forest where they kept her close as some of the inhabitants were baddies. The moment they were spotted, a cloaked figure swooped down and took Danielle from her parents' side. This made them start running after the cloaked figure, yelling, Give our little girl back, you baddie! This alerted not just everyone else in the forest, but everyone else they'd met up to that point. This rescue party consisted of everyone on the good side of Imagination Land, including Peter Pan, Tinkerbell, the Lost Boys, Tarzan, Jane, Dorothy Gale, all of Danielle's creations, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, Perseus, Hercules, Caractacus Potts, Oliver Twist and all sorts of goodies from other books, shows and films. 
Leading the group along with John and Linda was James Bond, Gandalf the Grey, Merlin, Robin Hood and the Blue Fairy. They led the rescue party into the Darklands where all the evil characters of Imagination Land lived and where poor Danielle was being held captive right now. Some good characters had already been sent after the cloaked figure as soon as the alert was sent out and they were right where the rescue party needed to be. John and Linda were allowed to the front, as well were Danielle's parents. They all stormed the evil lair and started searching frantically for poor Danielle who must have been scared out of her wits. They searched and searched until four of them found her in one of the cells under the lair fighting off an orc guard in the form of a black belt karate fighter, having used her imagination to do so. Once she'd defeated the orc, she turned back to normal and walked out of the cell to find a rescue party there to help her escape and escort her back to safety. They returned her to John and Linda, who were thrilled to have her back, and thanked everyone for their help as they made it back to the safety of the royal palace where all the princesses hugged her tightly, relieved she wasn't harmed in any way. After all that, it was time for the Smiths to return home to the real world. So they opened the portal home and stepped through it onto the platform of the imaginary world relocation machine in John's workshop. Hi there, and welcome back to the Danielle Smith series. We now reach the eighth episode, and it's called Danielle Smith and Her Friends. Danielle Smith had been on some excellent adventures over the summer, and she was now back to school. She attended Jacksonville Primary School, where she had just moved into year four with Mrs. Allen as her teacher. Her two best friends, Jenny Browning and Leroy Thompson, were very pleased to see her again. They asked her what she got up to over the summer. I spent the summer going on adventures with my parents using my dad's inventions, she told them. What kinds of adventures? asked Mrs. Allen. She told the class all about her adventures with the time machine, the fictional universe relocator, the dream machine, and the imaginary world travel machine. Breaking off for a moment, just to remind you that Danielle and her friends were all eight years old, so all her friends took her story as gospel and wanted more information. But Mrs. Allen just stood there looking bemused. That's enough, Danielle. I'm sure you think you went on those adventures, but it's not possible to travel through time or into fictional worlds or into one's dreams or into the imagination. All of those things are imaginary, she told Danielle firmly. But Mrs. Allen, it's all true. Detention, Miss Smith. This is no way to start a new term, is it? Being very naughty like that. Mrs. Allen scolded. Danielle didn't get home until a quarter past four that afternoon due to her detention, and Linda sat her down while she and John talked to her about telling her class about their adventures that summer and why she should have kept them a secret. My friends wanted to know what I got up to, so I told them, she explained. It's okay, kids. No harm done. We just think Danny told you too soon, John assured them. She was late home because Mrs. Allen put her on detention. Jenny explained. We know, sweetheart. She called us to let us know after giving her a detention. We think she overreacted so Danielle isn't grounded, said Linda, giving Danielle a tight hug. Danielle went off to play with Jenny and Leroy until seven when they had to go home, and John, Linda, and Danielle sat down to have dinner as a family like they always did. After that, Linda put Danielle to bed with a smile. Welcome back to the Danielle Smith series. This is the ninth episode and well, let's just get on with it. Danielle was out for a walk one Saturday when she noticed something odd. What is this? She thought as she went to investigate. Was it something an eight-year-old should see? Whatever it was, she had found it and she was going to find out what it was. So she decided to keep it. As she walked on, she was stopped by a police officer who asked to look at it. Danielle, do you know what this is? She asked. No, officer, I was hoping to find that out, replied Danielle. I can help you there. If you'd like to come with me, I can show you, replied the police officer. And she took Danielle to the Space Museum to show her find to one of the scientists who worked there. When the scientist saw what it was, he was surprised to learn Danielle had found it. I'm surprised to learn you found this piece of adamantium in the street, he said. 
This got Danielle thinking about the fictional universe relocator her scientist father John had invented, and wondering if it also worked in reverse, bringing fictional characters into the real world. When the police officer dropped her off home, she rushed to John and asked him if it did. I don't know, sweetheart, why do you ask, he replied. I found a piece of adamantium in the streets today, she told him. John was stunned. Did you just say you found a piece of adamantium, he asked. Yes, Dad, replied Danielle, just as a man with brown spiky hair with metal claws protruding from his fingers and wearing all yellow entered the room, looked around and exited the room. Danielle was dumbfounded. Had Wolverine from X-Men just entered the room just now? Welcome back to the Danielle Smith series. This is the 10th episode and we enter into our second multi-part story. Danielle Smith's Nightmare Part 1 Halloween was on its way and young Danielle Smith wasn't looking forward to it. She didn't like this holiday as it had a reputation for being a dark, scary and dangerous night of the year. I really don't like Halloween, it's just too scary. This concerned her inventor, Father John, who grew up loving Halloween, but her mother, Linda, understood how she felt, having disliked it herself as a child. I understand where you're coming from, darling. I didn't like Halloween when I was your age. Thanks, Mum. I'm only eight, and I don't think Halloween is a fun holiday. John heard about it, and respected his young daughter's feelings about the holiday and didn't pursue the topic any further. I get it, Danielle. Halloween isn't for everyone. That night, as she was settling down, her head on the pillow, she started to drift off. Sighs, finally, some peace and quiet. Little did she know her dreams were about to take a terrifying turn. She soon found herself running through a field, being chased by all kinds of dark and scary creatures and monsters. Some of them were from different cultures, but she didn't get a good look at any of them as she was busy running from them. There were demons, orcs, ogres, a banshee, gremlins, La Llorona, the grim reaper, vampires, werewolves, zombies and lots of others. Also, to make any sense with this, she herself was now 15 years older so she could protect herself. The 23-year-old Danielle was a brave monster hunter, only she was the one being chased by monsters. She was terrified of all these monsters as a child, which she was in reality. She eventually stopped for breath, hearing Medusa sneaking up behind her. She held a mirror out in front of her and closed her eyes before sneaking up on Medusa with a sword, taking a swing at her and lopping off her head, killing her. She opened her eyes and picked up the head, facing it towards the monster coming at her, turning it to stone. The eyes still work, dead or alive, she said in relief. Hello. And welcome back to the Danielle Smith series. This is the 11th episode and the final chapter of our multi-part story. Danielle Smith's Nightmare, Part 2. We continue our Halloween special in the mind of young Danielle Smith as she was now 23 years old and a brave monster hunter. This is being done so our story makes sense. Danielle Smith, the brave monster hunter who was being hunted by monsters until she turned tables on them as she managed to kill Medusa and a vampire. She now had the severed head of Medusa as her most powerful weapon against those horrible creatures. She was preparing her gun to fend off both a zombie and a werewolf who were both coming right for her. You aren't going to bite or savage me or anyone else tonight, you ugly beasts, she yelled at them. She shot the zombie in the head, destroying its brain and killing it on the spot. She then turned her attention to the werewolf. Kiss your hairy backside goodbye, she said, shooting him with a silver bullet which hit him in the heart, killing him instantly. As she ran on, she laid traps to other monsters pursuing her into falling for them, and lots of the monsters were stupid enough to fall for the traps and were blown to pieces. An army of demons soon had her surrounded with no escape. She pulled out all her holy paraphernalia and started forcing it upon them. She sprayed them with holy water, gave them Bibles, shoved crucifixes in their faces, got out her own Bible and started reading passages of it to the demons, watching as they all burned up and blistered before bursting into flames and combusting into ashes. She put away her holy paraphernalia and went on her way. As she approached the gateway, she found her way barred by the Grim Reaper. Don't take me, please. But he placed a hand on her shoulder, harvesting her soul. She woke in a cold sweat, screaming her head off. She looked around and was relieved to find out she was still eight years old and was safe at home in bed. John and Linda came rushing in to calm her down as she was clearly traumatized by her nightmare. It was just a nightmare, sweetheart. Monsters can't really come after you. They're not real. They sat and hugged her until she was calm enough to try getting back to sleep. And that is, and that was the first eleven episodes of Danielle Smith. There will be another compilation when more episodes are done. But until then, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and have us a magical time.